right here we're officially recording and let's get it started hey what's going on everybody welcome back to another episode of into the mind i'm your host marlon johnson and today my guest is the wonderful carmen Teresa. so i actually had the pleasure of meeting carmen on New Year's Eve, and we introduced ourselves. It was really good energy, and we got to talking. I asked her what she did for a living, and she explained to me that she sold life insurance. And honestly, Carmen, you were on like a pretty, like you were on a high that night. You were in a good mood. And (laughs) when I was asking, I was like, yo, like, what's up? And you had told me that you had just been awarded honorable mentions from your company, as people can see in the background, as a top producer for the year. So we really got to speaking more and you started explaining to me essentially your journey, your accomplishments, your setbacks. And I was like, I need to have her on the show (laughs) because like you are everything that I talk about on the show, mindset, dedication, perseverance, all of it. So today I want to dive into your story, have my audience get a chance to meet you, learn about you and see what sort of gems we can extract from our conversation today. So Carmen, first off, happy Valentine's Day and yes, welcome happy to the show. Valentine's Day. I wouldn't want to be uh, spending it any other way, right? It's to give love on this day and appreciation, which I feel like we're doing right now. I'm appreciating everything I've had and, and thank you for having me. Really, Marlon, it's a pleasure. Absolutely. So, so um, go ahead. Yeah, so Carmen, I do want to like start diving into your story because you had, you still have not had such an impressive story. You told me how, first off, you stepped into the world of selling insurance. Where were you before you started selling, before you became a top producer? Like, who was Carmen before the awards? Before the awards, who was Carmen? So little backstory, I guess, of how I got here, right? So Mm -hmm. the way that I've always, uh, my work ethic was when I was younger, it's like, extremely lazy right so my whole life you know when you grow up in an immigrant family you go to college you need to be a doctor or be a lawyer or you need to own your own business whatever it might be right so it's like go to school go to school go to school so um background went to west virginia university um went there came home went through a series of ailments in my life uh lost my father when i was very young to a car accident in 1999 um fast forward uh, when I came back from college, and this is how this transition of how funny, like the butterfly effects in your life, right? Like when one thing happens, it's a, an effect throughout your life. But came home after school, I'd gained a ton of weight. I went to the gym. <laughs> I ended up being at the gym so much that I got a position there. You know, I was 21, 22 at this time. And I really got to know people, right? So like every day, I wasn't just talking to the same type of person. I was having conversations with all types of age brackets from like 12, eight children to all the way up to like 90 years old at this gym. So I really got to learn personalities, how to deal with people, how to speak with them and, and learn not customer service, but customer satisfactory, you know? So I guess not the gift of gab, but I learned the cusp of magic, you know, to kind of make sure that people are happy at the end of the day. So after that, I realized that there was no growth for me. Um, I was looking into transitioning into uh, a position working for a supplement company uh, because I ended up becoming, uh, realizing that the fitness industry was something that I wanted to be a part of. But fast forward, I did not want to move. Uh, (laughs) So I ended up staying. I quit my job. This is one thing I always tell people, don't quit your job before you find another one, right? That is bullshit. Um, I don't believe that actually. I think that when someone is a natural born competitor or a hustler, you're always going to eat, right? So like any other 23 year old at this time, I was like, I need to find a new job. I need to find something. I'm panicking. And my best friend went on Craigslist, uh, found me a job doing like, I guess like cold calling where I worked for an association in, um, what the hell's that town called? Uh, Garden City. Okay. And I would call these people that would apply to be part of an association from LinkedIn. So I'd be talking to like the end, like merch, like the VP of like Victoria's Secret or merchandising, right? So I was dialing about four to 500 dials a day, right? From a little cubicle 
right? So, and this is like demon dialing, like the more dials call to contact, right? And I'm learning all these things and I would do was commission. So for any enrollment, I would get in 15 minutes, I would get to be like MasterCard starts with a five, Visa starts with a four, what's your CCV and your uh, security code, right? Like expiration date. So I would get $1,500 out of these VPs in 15 minutes, right? And I would get 15% of my commission and like $500 B. So I was walking out with like $1,500 a week at like the age of like 24, 20, 24, 25. Um, and I realized, I was like, one day I was like, wow, I'm really good at this. Like I was pretty good at sales, right? And I liked it because I was never stagnant, wasn't bored and was like competitive because it's like cutthroat. If you didn't write business or enroll somebody up two weeks, you're fired. Like they find someone else, right? And this sounds like not a real job to some people, but I, like I said, it's a butterfly effect. Like if it wasn't for me going to the gym, I would have never been able to have conversations with people, right? This is why mm -hmm. people are like, Ugh, I hate this job but it's getting you ready for your future, right? Like you manifest and things happen for a reason, but boom, had that association job, taught me how to dial, right? And like people get bored. I was like, I got to dial, I got to dial, I got to dial to get someone, right? Then after that, um, the office closed in Garden City uh, because of legal reasons. Uh, and they opened one in Long Island City and I live all the way at the end of Long Island. I was like, I am not commuting. Like I am not doing this, it's not happening. It's already like an hour on, off Ocean Parkway traffic. So I quit. And then my best friend is like, let's find something else. Good old Craigslist, right? So these ads, yeah. um, I applied to work for a company. And this is where I always talk about people like they don't, people like to work nine to five, right? And I already was working off commission, but there was some type of base, right? So if you do real estate, any type of sales that have like huge opportunity, there's no, you're your own 1099. Right? There's no base. It's what time in, time out. Money is energy. So I was like, well, opportunities unlimited, 100,000, no base pay. I was like, what I got to lose, right? So I don't even know what this interview is about. And I find out it's life insurance. And I was like, all right, went to the first interview, go to group. And I'm listening to the guy talk about like, you know, who thinks that they're going to write 10,000 in a week or 5,000 a month? Like who wants to make $10,000 a month? Who wants to make 100,000? And I remember sitting in this group room, sitting in the front row, and I raised my hand, and I was like, me. He's like, the day you write 5,000, Carmen, I will take you to Peter Luda's Steakhouse, right? And I was like, all right, watch. I will. And that was it. Like, it transitioned me to the place where when I came board, I was like, this retrospective looking back, like, life insurance saved my life. Without it, I would have had nothing. My mom... No, no college education, no GED, nothing. Dad died in a car accident. If I didn't come back from school, finish at home, gain that weight, would never went to the gym, learned people. I would have never been able to dial the way I did. And, and fast forward, wouldn't have been able to deal with being in this industry because you are your own boss, secretary, booker, learned how to be relentless on the phones, learned how to deal with people in-house. And I said to myself what I could do in-house and fast forward, I was always the top producer. So it, that's how my transition to this company started. Um, and in the beginning, you know, I was lazy again. You know, I knew what my potential was. I just didn't tap into it. I just went through the motions. So, you know, in sales, you can sell a house or, or do an enrollment and I can make five, 6,000 a week and be like, all right, I'm done working for the whole month. I'm good. You know, no real responsibilities at 26 at that point, too much, no kids, no nothing. Um, yeah, so that's how that started. Um, and then I went into like a bit of a deep side. So I don't know if, if that's answered your question right there. Yeah. That's how I got in. But, you know, when you start a new career, right, mm -hmm. you're inspired, right? You're excited. You ever meet that person that's brand new and they're like so motivated, right? And that's what happened. When I first came aboard, I was like booking. Like our, our company, when I came aboard, like suppose I was like the founding push in 2016 because we were like neck for neck for being the number one agency in the world, which is one of the largest like conglomerate life insurance companies like in the industry right now is Gold Life, like Torchmark, like Warren Buffett owns our company. So when I came aboard, I like helped our agency push to be number one in, uh, in the world. Right. And then I hit a wall 
And I was in a very, you know, as I talk about like depression and, and, and I was in a really toxic relationship and we spoke, you know, about affirming your life and manifestation. And, and I was placed into this bubble where I was suffering from victim, like being a victim of my yep. So I, I end up being this, like, again, like brand new child born into the world. Think of it like no problems, no issues. And boom, you know, I was thrown off. And for years, Marlon, like I dealt with that and it like kind of clouded my judgment. I almost left the company probably like two or three th times. And I'm so thankful that I didn't because of other outside. And that's why I talk about to people about manifestation and, and affirming and, and protecting your energy, because that is your mind is the most powerful thing. And, and what I started to do is I victim, victimize my life. I didn't want to get up. I didn't want to go to work. I didn't want to go in the office. I didn't want to be around people anymore. And for years I dealt with that. And in 2019, I turned 30, you know, and I remember blowing out my candles on my birthday. This is on my desk as a reminder. <laughs> my birthday. And I told myself that I would no longer be a victim of my life and my mind and that I needed to change. And the only way, and Elena Cardone says this, you can't get people to change, right? It's a, it's a generalized statement. You have to change yourself when you're ready, right? Because someone can tell me to do something or to manifest or how to be positive, but nobody's going to actually implement something if they understand or feel like they need to change, right? So sure. I changed. I, changed. Um, I woke up after my birthday and July 1st, went to my secretary, Tiffany, at the time. And I was like, 28 days, 28 days, I'm going to be habitual. 28 days, I picked up this book. It's inside. It's actually, I walk around with it in my pocketbook, like someone's Bible. You ever meet someone that has like a Bible in them all the yep. time? Right. This is in my pocketbook at all times. There we go. I can go get it for you. But uh, the book changed my life. It's called The Power of Consistency by Weldon Long. Just like any typical person, you know, how do you learn something new? You Google or YouTube, right? Encyclopedia mm -hmm. is no longer in existence for some people that didn't understand what was going on before. <laughs> but I Googled like how to be consistent, how to stay positive. And this book popped up on Amazon. I ordered it. I read three chapters in and I started hysterical crying. I didn't finish the book. I remember standing up, putting my jacket on. It had to be like 7.30 at night. I drove to Michael's. I bought this huge board and I said for 28 days, I'm going to be in control and of my life, my emotions, my thoughts. I said, that, you know, Gandhi said you, your emotions, your thoughts become emotions, emotions become actions and actions become results. Right. So I said to myself, I'm going to speak positive, you know, and people don't realize that what you affirm and what you think is what you see and what you become. Right. So People. let's pause right here because first off, I absolutely love your story. Like I'm getting like sucked in and I'm like, I want to know more and more. Yeah. But like, I want to really quickly recap a little bit because where you came from, first off, I appreciate everything of how you started off where you're like, yeah, like I really, I started in a gym. Right. <laughs> you had no clue. That's one of the things that, you know, I think Steve Jobs is the one who said it. Like you can't ever see how the dots connect when you're looking forward. It's only after you get somewhere and you look backwards, you can actually see how the dots connect. So you recognize all of these little places were your stepping stone that eventually led you to where you are today. One thing I'm curious about, right, is as you're going through all these progressions, right, you know, because right now you're getting ready to talk about how you hit a wall, essentially, you know, what was it like going through these progressions Were you excited like i mean on the outside anyone on the outside looking in is like okay carmen's like moving up she was with the gym then she was with the health company then she's starting to do the insurance and then she's rocking it over there so from the outside perspective what were people seeing and then on the inside perspective what was actually going on on the outside i mean perception is everything right mm -hmm. so even if someone was going through a tribulation or or pain nobody would know you show people face, right? What you want them to see and what was perceived. So, you know, even through my fitness journey, 
right? Losing, I lost like over 75 pounds, right? So I did my first bikini competition. I look so happy when I was talking about positive, but a uh, weight or your ideal look is not really healthy in your mind, right? So I definitely struggled with self-image for a while. Um, and then when I saw another opportunity to get out of that, to learn some other new thing, I think that what now people understand is that change is really uncomfortable, <laughs> yes. right? Change is very uncomfortable. And one of my favorite yes. things, and, and, it's, and it's crazy to me that how you can communicate and comprehend there's such a thin line to convey a message to someone. It's like tomato, tomato, right? I could say tomato, but I meant tomato. Same thing to some people. But mm -hmm. to understand the biggest thing for me to go through that was understanding that change is painful. It's uncomfortable. And as children talk about this all the time, you know, we're taught if something hurts or they come to baby us or pick us up, it's okay. So stop. Don't, don't do it again, honey. If you don't feel comfortable, don't do it. Like, and for me, my, my childhood, you know, if I was hurting, be like, get up, get up, get back on. Or if I get hurt, my mother would be like, you happy now? You happy? Like it was, I had a very beautiful childhood. And, and why I'm saying this to you is that I was never comfortable in my life. Never comfortable. I was never pat on the back. I wasn't nothing. I was always taught to do more if you're upset keep on going. Don't stop. You don't have a choice. So for me, getting uncomfortable was one thing that I, I didn't understand and grasp until I started hitting those progressions, like that next wall, that next wall. And the more I did stuff like that, it was like, I realized probably my mid 20s, 20, 20, 25, I was like, holy crap, I really can have anything that I want. Literally. Yeah. Like I really can. Like person, thing, item, idea, um, like anything, anyone can, but they have to see that, right? So I think that that was the biggest, like going through those things was the idea that I was really uncomfortable. And every time I did that adversity, of boom, pushing it up, boom, keep going. And and what was the worst thing that could happen to me? So I think that's what, I hope I answered that for you properly. But the biggest thing for me was realizing how uncomfortable I was and, and crying and getting up the next day and just keep going because that's where true growth happened for me, right? Like I was thrown into an industry that I had no idea about, but I was prepped for, right? It was like, my plan was already there. I just had to follow it. I had to open my eyes and see it. And I, and I think that was the biggest progression was being able to be comfortable in an uncomfortable state. If that makes sense for you. No, you know, that makes a lot of sense. And that seems to be a very common trait with a lot of the guests that I have on this show that have reached different levels of success, that's something that is extremely common. You have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable because like you said, that change, it's not a good feeling. I mean, even this morning, for instance, every day I try and make myself very uncomfortable, right? This morning I went out for a run. I didn't know how long I was gonna run. I just started running. And yeah. every time I was like, you know what? This is a good opportunity to turn back. My brain would trigger, you wanna turn back right now. Now you have to keep running further. Yep. And it was weird. And a lot of people might be like, well, why are you just putting yourself to suffer? It's like, you know, growth comes from that. You know, that's the only place growth comes from because growth and comfort don't live in the same house. No. It's impossible for them to commingle. So if you want to grow, you have to be willing to put yourself through that. So now you're in 2019 and you've hit a plateau of sorts, but you're beginning to, you picked up this book you read through it, you had the Michaels, you're like, I gotta get there right now. I gotta go get everything. Yeah, that was it. And yeah. yeah. That was it, the book. Um, so to touch on your thing about pain, right? So I tell people there's two things you can experience in your life. And that was a perfect example with you, right? You can have pain of growth or pain of regret. It just depends on that person on what they choose, right? So that's what I, I try to implement and get people to understand. Like you can have two choices, right? and choose pain of growth because pain of regret is just going to become a victim set and that's it. So pain of growth is a huge thing. And I, I, I love that, that you said that. So that was another thing that I wanted to touch on, but that book back to what you're saying, um, 28 days, we spoke about, uh, the affirmations, right? So if I look on my mirror right now, uh, I am relentless. I am a top producer. I am the number one agent in New York state. 
I will be on stage. Uh, I wrote my whole entire year out, right? By the numbers. Um, and I would go to the board and see my daily like enrollments, deduct the numbers, tell myself, affirm what I will be writing the next day, the next week, would write in the journal how I felt, talk to myself. You know, I, I have, you know, many journals and I was going to share some, but I don't even, there's so many around here that, you know, it's hard. It's, it's like a long lost uh, journal, you know, like the diaries type of things. Yep. My grandkids one day read my journal and be like, my grandma's crazy. But, <laughs> like, this one was talking to herself. But, you know, affirmations and people don't understand the difference between affirmations and prayer. Um, you know, I did that for 20 days and I was praying to God, like, please, God, like, let me have this. You know, the problem is prayer is to be giving thanks, you know, or to give hope for someone else, I feel like. You know, prayer for yourself, I feel like it should not be selfish or self-seeking. You know, that's just my perception. You know, I don't want to talk about too much about religion, but, you know, and I learned that. And affirmations is what you want. You, it's your control. Like your life is in your control. Like I am going, I am the number one female producer in the world. I will be a number one overall producer in the world this year. I will be the number one MG in the world. I will break a million dollars as a personal, like, you know, all those things, that's from me. And what I do is I thank God for my blessings that he's given me and my family. And I'm grateful that I wake up with a fresh breath of air every day and I have a pillow to lay my head on. You know, that's where people get confused with affirmations and prayer, you know? But um, so anyway, back to the board, um, I woke up, it was September 1st. And I was like, holy shit, I did it. Oh my God, I did it. Like I did it. I I did it. I, I did what I said I was gonna do. Uh, and I like read more about the book. I finished the book. And he was like, you know, the mind is a powerful thing, but you need to clear out your box. You need to, to clear out the clutter, anything that doesn't serve you a purpose, right? So this relationship was still lingering. And Tony Robbins says people change in life for two reasons, inspiration or desperation. So my, my path started back on my birthday to change and desperation. That day that I came home to see my significant other, they looked me in the face and said, and I said, I did it. I did what I said. say. He's like, congratulate, I'm not gonna congratulate you. I'm not gonna pat you on the back for just doing something you should have done, All right? So yeah, it's exactly, but you know, this person, and I don't want it to be perceived as like, you know, he was a bad person for me. I think that without his type of manipulation in the sense of he was trying to break bad habits for me, which are very hard. He didn't want me to become inconsistent again. He wanted to keep pushing me, you know, like a parent, like a bad, tough love type of thing to not be comfortable. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'll congratulate you after you do it for a year. What do you think happened to that relationship? It sounds like that relationship ended. That but... relationship, the very night ended. There we go. I'm uh, glad. Over, <laughs> over. Uh, so fast forward, uh, I end up fishing. I, and to understand numbers wise, so people understand a premium for life insurance, say, an enrollment, say I do $100 a month, right? 100 times 12 is $1,200 is a sale. So it's 1200 ALP, right? So for year to date in 2019, from January all the way till July 31st, I was at $34,000, which is like nothing. It's like 34 right. people I would have sold, right? So from that August 1st, all the way through December, I ended the year at $170,000. That's a big jump. It's a huge jump. <laughs> huge jump. It's like 140 grand in, within less than like four months. So if you do the math, that's like 40,000 on average that I did, which is not typical. The typical top producer writes about 10 to 12 a month. They're, they're, they're netting ALP over 100 grand. That's a top producer. So you understand the type of production that was done. So mm -hmm. after that, we broke up. I had a, a like a, like I had arrived. It was like my, it was like limitless. Like I saw everything so clearly and every day I just kept writing my journal. I affirmed everything that I want in this life. And I still do, you know, you do become what you want, like you think about and if affirmations are so important to understand that, you know, my journey 
through it all was out of desperation. I was just so desperate to prove everyone wrong, right? And then what happens when you try to, when you wake up, you're like, you're like, what the hell was I doing? Right, like in the 16th second, I was doing it for all the wrong reasons. Again, like another lesson to be learned, right? So I remember sitting down with the owner of the state for New York for our company. And he was like, what are your, what's your vision? What do you see? This is in November of 19. This is before I broke, I was second in New York last year. And I said, what do I see? I will be number one next year. I'm gonna write 500 grand. I will be on stage. I will be top 10. And I, I will be a manager next year. And, and so you understand, that never has been done in our, our New York history, right? Like writing those type of numbers as a personal producer, those type of numbers are written based on like 30 to 50 people. And that was it. Again, affirm my life, wrote it down. I still write down journals. I wanted to share some with you. I would have to go find my book. I don't know where it is. I wasn't prepared again, but um the power of like affirmations and all of that and your mind is like a like external source do you feel like that like do you feel like that like it could it can light up at different times right like and sometimes you have to remember certain things like when i hit it i hit it again in february i felt myself like tiring down you know like that motivation motivation mm -hmm. is what gets you going and discipline is what keeps you going, right? So when when you hit so on, so like when I say external source, it's like that light that's super bright, and then when you leave it on for too long, you ever notice the light starts to dim? That's what mm -hmm. I'm trying to explain. Like I like metaphors, and I felt it going down, and February hit, and I was like, wake up, like what are you doing? Because I was tired from like seven months of production, and then um, my cut, my uncle had been diagnosed with cancer. Uh, I had end up rushing to the hospital, being on crutches, falling down the steps, tearing my ACL on crutches. March happened, then COVID, boom, right? Completely out of the field, transition into virtual. And uh, that was it. I never looked back. I had no distractions. This was like my safety zone. Um, and then the discipline is really what people lack. Right, so like those affirmations, you can affirm and write, I'm, I'm a producer, I'm relentless, but those, the, the motivation and the wording has to be with discipline, has to be with energy and action, day in, time, day out with consistency. So when I hit that, again, I hit another wall, boom. July, my aunt was diagnosed with stage four uh, ovarian and brain, uh, brain cancer, right? And Again, power of consistent. I was so consistent, consistent, consistent. And like, it's like a train when you derail something, right? Like momentum, I was off for like a solid week. And that's big when you're, you're pushing against, you know, time at these numbers. And again, I had to go back to my journals where it's important to affirm and read and, go and reflect on your journeys. And that's why I tell people it's so important to do those things, keep a log. Mm -hmm. And I was reading back and I had wrote a note to myself and said, um, remember why you started, right? Remember why you started. And I have goosebumps like thinking about it, but said, remember why you started. And I went to my aunt's house that night. I canceled all my appointments. And I said to her and I said, I love you very much. And um, I'm here for you and I support you. And I said, I'm going to finish out the year for you. And I, and I want to be here for you as much as I can, but I'm going to do it like in, in dedication to you because my uncle beat it, had surgery. But now, you know, and went to the doctor. Stony Brook said they've never seen a stage four brain and ovarian never go to the bone marrow, right? What are the odds? Both my cousin, my uncle and my aunt beat it. Stage four, beat it. What are the chances, right? And I, and I went to her house and, um, she was in self-pity. This is why I'm going into the store for affirmations. I bought, found a book at Marshall's and it was um, to write like, what are your favorite memories of what brought you joy? Or what was, what are something that you didn't get to do, which you wish you'd have more time? And all my aunt kept saying was like, 
I wish I worked less. I wish I had more time with my family. I wish I traveled. I wish I, I, I enjoyed life more. And she kept saying, you know, I don't want to do this. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to die. I'm like, stop it. I said, do you know what beats cancer? I said, this. She was like, she's like, I hope. I was like, you know, people don't understand hope and faith are two different things, right? I hope, I hope is like kind of like saying I try. I have faith. I will be okay. This is nothing. Tell yourself that. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Let me fucking tell you more. My aunt's mentality changed night and day when she beat it. Just from trying to go there and teach her how to, to speak positive and affirm what you want. Do not sit there and die. And that's I mean, I mean like cancer can be life where your, your mind can turn what you think into cancer and spread, right? That's why I'm gonna tell you the story that like, my aunt who was sick and having this conversation with her affirmed what she truly wanted, you know? And she healed herself. You know, not only like did the doctors of course help, but like in her mind and that's how she was able to fight it. So again, the mind <laughs> affirming and consistency and staying positive and I hit the wall and then told her I was gonna get back to it and, and do it for her. Fast forward again. You know, I finished out the year you know, and, and my life mission, right? is not about money, not about the plaques or the, the title or the cars or the house or, or what it does. I think that the most important thing that Kobe Bryant said was like, how can your story, right? Inspire like, another person and another person and another person and it inspires them to create their own greatness right so you know I will break a million this year you know in 2021 and the importance for people to understand is that you can choose two paths right and the one path that everyone seems is the easy one right the one that's already paved the one that you could follow and work nine to five, live a comfortable life and, and, and just go about your life complacently, right? Then the other path is one that's not paved, the one that's a little gloomy, but you never know what's on the other end, but it is what you make of it. And then, and my job is to show others that, that no matter what right or wrong path you go, it's the right one is the one you choose and the one that you make of your life and and you are what you believe. So if you go down that path that's ugly, but you go down thinking it is ugly, it is gonna be ugly. If you go down that path and it's hopeful and it's going to be everything you want, the dream life, the dream career, the, the, the opportunities unlimited, you're spiritual and in tuned, that's what it will be, right? So, and, and I hope that my, you know, my story trying to explain it you know it's, it's it's peaks and valleys my life and I think that's where people don't see is that it wasn't fucking easy oh hell no it was not easy you know and then in the life insurance world you know I'm I'm, I'm not I'm someone you know and I and I've definitely paved the road for female as well you know being the highest producer in 70 years in the company but it's the idea of like hey, like, come on, you know, like, this is what, believe yourself, like, affirm it, manifest it, go, like, headstrong, don't give up, just like you said, like, when you have that minute, because the minute you stop in life is when you start dying, right? It's true. That's it, so. Wow, Carmen, seriously, like I, I know that people, helped a little bit, you know, the, to show you. Oh my gosh, all of it. Yeah, I mean, I know people that are listening, like they're going to be listening to this right now. They're just like on the edge of their seat, just <laughs> leaning in, trying to hear more. Because seriously, like it's powerful. Your story, truly, like it got me there. Like it's emotionally like pulling stuff up for me right now, you know. And I love what you said about how you actually at one point look back through your journals because that's something I think a lot of people no one ever mentions that right you know they'll tell you to journal they'll tell you to write things down but 
it's not something that anyone ever talks about. Like at some point you are going to break down and at some point you're going to go through your own readings. You're going to go through your own history and you are going to remind you what you're doing here. And that's a powerful thing because I know I've had that breakdown moment myself where I had to seriously ask myself, like, why am I doing any of this? And when I couldn't come up with the answer, I literally like, it's like, it, I got goosebumps when you said that. Cause I was like, holy crap, that was me. Like I literally opened up a notebook that I'd written in a year earlier and it reminded me why I started and it just reignited the flame and it gives you just enough, like you said, to keep going because the manifestation, like the, the words of affirmation, a lot of people, they will do it and they'll say, well, it doesn't really work. No, you don't really work. You know, like you're not putting in the effort. Like you gotta, it's this or this, it's not this or that it's, I'm going to make it work or I'm going to make it work. That's it. And I think, yeah, like you really, you hit the nail on the head for that because I, I worry sometimes like when people, and this is why I like to deep dive and have these sort of conversations. You yeah. know, if I go onto your social media, I can look and I'm like, well, it's so easy for Carmen. Like everything <laughs> works out for her. She's so friendly and everyone likes her and she takes great pictures and she's super cool to talk to. Of course, it's going to be easy for her. It's harder. But it's harder <laughs> they see the, the ugly side, right? They don't see the, you know, the stipulation there, what I go, I've been through in my life, right? The ugly parts. They only see the rainbows and butterflies, you know? Or of course she's going to be successful in sales. She's, she's not bad looking, right? That's hard. It's harder, right? In most case scenarios, just because you have a pretty face and you're, you're easy to talk to, how do you think that's going to make someone else feel on the other side? It's true. It yeah, closes no. the doors, you know, and and that's what you're saying. Like you're you're right, a hundred fifty percent. Like you, people on the outside are like, oh, this is easy. Of course she could do it. They don't know the bad parts. They don't know about the insomnia or the anxiety or the 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 worried about it not happening, and then having to like switch yourself up. Like it's happening. I don't have to worry about it, right? They don't see the 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 sacrifice of not spending time with my family or or not being able to go work out and or being there for my nephew or spending time with my mother or seeing my godson you know what i'm saying like they don't see those things they don't see me being able to enjoy the fruits of my labor you know they don't get to see those things they think it's just all great but, yeah no exactly so well, you know i you know, I do want to be respectful of your time. So I have three final questions for you. Two of, of them I ask every person, but this one, this first question is for you specifically. Okay. You know, and it really has to dive into like what you just said there. Okay. When the doubt starts to bubble up, right? Because at some point, no matter who you are, the doubt bubbles up. It doesn't matter if you're Kobe, if you're Oprah Winfrey, if you're Obama, I like guess some point doubt creeps in. When that happens, what is it that you found for yourself helps you push past that wall, past that, that fake barrier? I call it like the illusion, the illusion barrier. What? <sighs> Reset. Resetting my mind. Because what happens is when, when you control, right, your emotions, so they, when you lose control of your emotions, right, that's where the, like that, you're like thrown off or you have self-doubt and then you have to like recenter yourself, mm -hmm. right, and bring yourself back to why I was here, what I'm doing, reset, and, and that's what I do is by the minute here, Marlon, you know, it's, and that's the thing, like, you know, I got to go by the minute. <laughs> Yeah. You know, in this type of industry, anyone that's the ten is by the minute, not by the day or the hour or the week. It's by the minute. I gotta set myself up mentally. That's why I, I keep my mind so prosperous. I don't let nobody in here, in my life. If you're not bringing additive value, and all you're doing is taking from my energy, you don't need to be here. But the one thing that I will say that's a huge thing to bring myself back, um, and how I do that, to be honest. You want to know how I do that? Like what the things I do? We got the secrets. All right, let's go. The secrets, the secrets. Okay. Um, secrets are, I don't meditate 
as much. I have meditated a few times. I listen to meditation music. Okay. I will sage the shit out of my house. <laughs> All right. I will um, sit down and write exactly how I'm feeling, why I'm feeling, acknowledge my thought process and what I need to do to get rid of that and how to fix it. Then I'll look myself in the mirror and I will talk shit to myself. I swear to God, I'll talk shit to myself. And, and you, Carmen, this insatiable, this insatiable feel that I have, I want everyone to have it, but to understand that to be relentless in the pursuit of your life, that's why I got this tattoo. It is a daily reminder of me to, to, and I will always want more in my life. And that's what, that's what pre-focuses me every single day. So sage, meditation, talking shit to myself, but like in a positive way, like yeah. if I'm tired, be like, be like, you know how many people come and are, are getting up in the morning and are tired too? What do you think they're doing? They're not complaining. Get up, get up, get up now. So in two or five years from now, you don't have to get up, get up. Yo, Carmen, that is on point. No, seriously, <laughs> like, because so many people would not expect that to be your answer. So many, and that's something that we have to do, right? Yeah. And it's not a negative thing. Like, that's like the hard part for people to understand. It's like, you got to be real with yourself. If you look in the mirror and you're overweight, you're not going to just like acknowledge it. Like, yo, I'm overweight, right? It's like, I listen to um, David Goggins. And it's funny, I'm reading his book right now. That's something he really speaks about. And like, that's something when I'm working out, when I'm running, that's what it is. Like if you're listening inside my mind, it's not, yeah, Marlon, you can do anything. It's like, yo, you're feeling tired. Keep running. Stop being a punk. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah. but it keeps me going. Yeah. And you tap into that second wave and you're in control there. So I absolutely love that answer. Thank That's you. spot on. Yeah, so two final questions. These are a little bit more of what I ask everybody. And you already started to tap into it at the beginning, which is reading, right? You pick up mm -hmm. books, you read you know, you already mentioned 28 days. So besides that book, can you name one other book that has been a complete paradigm shift for you that once you picked it up, your mind never quite went back to being the same. It just unlocked something, something clicked. So it was, so for 20, it was The Power of Consistency by Weldon Long. Another one was uh, so many. I'm not going to bring up the 48 levels of power because not a lot of people could read that book and understand it. I feel like, cause I had to read that like three or four times, but I'm going to give like a better one. So like, I, I didn't understand who I was in sales, right? Because I, I don't look at people as a sale. That's why I believe in what I do. I'm very passionate about it, but to understand in life, right? I, I look at it as I'm serving people. That's why I don't look at people as a dollar. I think that's why I do very well but to understand that in life you are being sold or you're selling, right? So I think the second book that very early on was that book by Grant, Gar uh, Grant Cardone where I understood, you know, I want to give a, a more of a like self-development, but for me in, in, in a sales industry, for someone who's new and doesn't understand or someone that's like, I don't want to work in sales. Like in life, you're selling or being sold, right? Sure. Like we're, I'm selling people on the idea right now of like, affirmations right i'm being positive and like that's it whoever listens to this right now i just sold the shit out of you <laughs> and like that's it like seller be sold i think grant cardinal which when i give very nuanced to a lot of my people and relentless by tim s grover those are like the pivotal three books that molded me the first well first 90 days of my career and then midway when it catapulted me so those three besides or besides the 48 laws of power was by green. That was the other one. There's a lot I can go through. Yeah, honestly, like that's why I always, I force people to like limit it to books. <laughs> I'm just just like, <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way. Like I look over at my library and I'm just like, yeah, I mean, I could list books for hours. Yeah, yeah. But, so that was it. Pretty simple book. You know, it's an easy read, but for people to understand the, the, the how perplexed the idea of sales is for me, at least. That's how it made me understand. Good so stuff. That. Yeah, yeah. So final question, and this one's my all-time favorite. Like, I'm probably going to one day make a book out of everybody's answers. Oh, but imagine tomorrow morning you wake up and you are a blank slate. You forget everything. Like, you don't have any of your past memories. You don't remember your childhood. You don't remember these last couple of years, the progressions. You don't remember the ups, the downs. It is all wiped clean. Now, when you wake up in your bed, 
you're not afraid. You're not worried. It's not like a Saw movie. You're safe. You know you're safe. But there is just nothing there. However, one little like inkling, one thought does a pop, like a pair in your mind, right? This little seed. Okay. And for whatever reason, when you get this seed, you don't question it. You don't doubt it. You just take it and you work with it. What would you want that first thought to be? I see the thing is these kind of questions. I like these things because I have a very good imagination. So this is like a deep question. So can I ask a question from this question? Absolutely. I love, I love this. Let's this go. Is you, this is how you get people to do what you want, right? You have to ask questions. So <laughs> from that thought of that seed. Now, I, and am I aware if I have any family here? Like You're not aware of old? any of your relationships. You're not, not aware of, like, I mean, you wake up in your house, you know, you're in a safe space. You know, okay. it's like, you're like grandma who lost all her memories. If you wake up, you kind of feel like, all right, this is a safe place. I just have no clue who I am or where I am. But I don't even know what a family is, right? You don't know any, like, you don't even know your own name. You can still comprehend the English language and um, any other language you can speak, but you just am total amnesia here. the first thing that I would pop into my head, like the idea of like being, not being alone, like having, like the idea is that like, I don't even know if I would even understand the, the idea of a family, but the only thing that I could say when you say like start off slate, like brand new, or to like have anything in my life would be the idea of, of having my family together. And that's all I can think about. That's the truth. Like it has nothing to do with uh being sensitive about this like having them together healthy wow that's the only thing you can think of like that's it like healthy family everyone like if I could have fresh start like of my life or just in general it's why I love these kind of questions like if I was like to say if you could make the ocean any other color what would it be or if the grass wasn't green anymore or if you could only walk or would you lose or would you lose your taste or your smell like I love stuff like this this is a great question but only thing I can think of is a seed planted in my head is not business it's to think of my family if I had a family and if they were healthy and okay and that's all I would I would want that's it that's the only thing I can think of that's it I know it sounds ridiculous but that's all that I does think. not sound ridiculous that sounds like the answer of somebody that is extremely thoughtful and has really taken the time to see what matters I mean I ask this question to everybody and there are very few people that really stop and take the time to really really think and really come back with such a deep answer like that and clearly you have thought about things like this in the past <laughs> where you really thought like, what is important to me? And they're like, after, after the money comes, after your needs are taken care of, what really matters? My family. And yeah, you hit the nail right on the head right there. Cause you know, I think that people don't understand that in this life, yes, money is great, right? If you talk to the most successful people that uh, that I know in their life, they, they live for their family. That's their purpose. That's, that's what they do, right? You give without the intent of wanting to receive for the ones that you care for and love and provide to the best of my ability. And I don't think that people understand like, oh, I give because I would want to receive. That's how I want to be treated. No, that's incorrect. Like I give with the intent of not receiving because I feel as that they deserve it so much that some people don't even give to themselves. Those are the ones that deserve that much, right? And I want to give my mom everything. I want to give my grandparents everything. I want to give my nephew everything. And it's not monetary, like just a quality of life, health, love. And if I wish that my mom had her partner still, like that's you know, all I could give wish for her is happiness. That's it. See. Wow. See. I love that. I love that. That's definitely, you are now up there on like, I'm going to have to sit and really think about who like my top three answers are now. And yours is definitely up there. 
<laughs> seed, my family and health. That's it. That's my world. So Carmen, seriously, I want to say thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you for sharing and just being open and vulnerable and really letting your story out into the world, because I truly do know that people are going to receive a lot of value from this. And this story alone is going to change lives. So I'm extremely grateful that you were able to share it on my platform. For people that have listened to this and now they're like, I need to know who Carmen is. I need to find out more <laughs> about her. I need to connect with her. I just need to yeah. like tell her, thank you. You know, how can they find you? What's the best place for them to, you know, track you down? Of course. So I don't really use Facebook. I like, don't like it. I have a Facebook, but Instagram, uh, they can find me. Oh God, I don't know my Instagram name. Oh, so it's uh, CT. A R R O Y O. So that's what my Instagram name is, C T O R O Y O. Uh, and then I'm on TikTok. Um, my page is linked from my Instagram, and they can find me there. And then, of course, they can email me, reach out. I do answer my DMs, but if it's like anything personal, I always suggest write me an email. Uh, and that's all on my Instagram. That's like the easiest way to find me, of course, that way. Awesome. Anyone that needs life insurance, you know where I am. Just kidding. But, but that's the most important thing is that I just want someone who needs help not to feel ashamed to reach out to anyone, right? Because, you know, I didn't ask for help and I had to hit rock bottom by myself. And I know it's a dark, deep place. And it's always important to be around people that you want to be. So if anyone needs help or wants to speak about anything in their life, it's important that they know that they're not alone and that they can always reach out to anyone. Because anyone that has truly been through the bottom to the top are going to help anyone who, who will put the work in. That's it. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to put your info in the description below so people will be able to just quickly click and link yeah. over to you. Okay. And seriously, folks, reach out to her. She's extremely approachable, super awesome to talk to. And I am so grateful that I ran into you and I met you this oh, year. I look forward to seeing great. your growth. And great. if you ever need anything, please just reach out, ask, let me know. I would have my power, I buy will my help. Oh, buy my house from you. But I think a lot would be very mad if I didn't get it. <laughs> That's it. I'd be killing. Just like he's like, I can't get insurance for anyone else, but Carmen should kill me. So yeah, maybe no. the second house, the second one, and the third one, I'll come to you. There we go. Let me know when you need something out of state. I got you. All right. See you. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get this day back on a roll.